Cindy Cross here from the Post and Rail and I've been requested to make my dark chocolate salted caramel brownie. And so that's what I'm gonna to make today. If I sold out of this in my farm shop at Apsley when I had it going, people would be so upset. And so I made one of these nearly every day or every second day. And it's a version of my grandpa's cake, so I'm just gonna get started. It's the same as cake recipe ingredients, but the method is different. And it starts with a cup of dark chocolate chips. Now I'm putting it in this bowl for a really good reason, and that's because it gets melted with a stick of butter, so 250 grams of salted butter. Now I know a lot of recipes say unsalted butter, but I find they don't last in the fridge, and as I live out of town, I don't shop often, and unsalted butter goes rancid really quickly, so the salt helps, and plus I don't add salt in any other part of the recipe, so it's completely fine to use salted butter. Um, and I'm just going to melt this in the microwave now. I'm thinking it's going to take a minute, minimum a minute, but it could take a little more because I really want all the chocolate to be dissolved. So I'll pop it in. That was easy. Now I put the butter on top because the butter will melt and rinse down through the chocolate. Being warm, it will melt the chocolate and it just seems to be a really good way of doing it. Um, Believe me, I've made plenty of these. So in the bowl, and I'm just gonna keep going while the microwave's going in real time. Here we go, four eggs. And they get whisked in the bowl with a cup of sugar. I'm so glad I got this glass bowl because you guys can see what I'm doing. So that's four eggs, a cup of sugar. Here we go. We're going to whip it until it's pale and fluffy. Needs more than a minute. Okay, so that took one minute and 40 seconds, but it is a cold day. The butter was cold out of the fridge, so just start it a minute and just keep giving it 20 seconds afterwards until you end up with this liquidy, buttery, melted dark chocolatey, goodness <laughs> so I can feel with the knife that I'm stirring it through and I feel like there's no kind of solid lumpy bits because I want to stir that into the cake batter in a minute all right so that can just sit there for a minute this in that minute and 40 this KitchenAid whipped up this eggs and sugar really really light and fluffy so that's part of that step Next, we add a cup of self-raisin flour. And also a cup of cocoa. Ooh, the cocoa dust. All right, so gently gonna mix that. Now I'm going to show you there's a point where it looks perfect. Now wait for it. You got to wait for it. Now it's still a bit lumpy. And just wait till it takes up the chocolate. It'll become glossy. And that's the point. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's the point where it's shiny, glossy, smooth. And that's your perfect brownie butter. And I'm not saying you should, but I'm just saying it's delicious. Just straight out of the bowl, just like that. However, I'm gonna get the, um, the baking tin to put it in. Now I've got the oven preheated at 200 degrees. And when I put it in, I'll actually turn it back down to 180. And that's something I do often when I'm baking a cake. 
So I don't want to lose that initial heat. Now, as the chocolate and butter cools, um, it's really starting to become quite a solid cake batter. Um, and that's what happens when dark chocolate cools down. This is what's gonna give it the fudgy texture of a good brownie. So in the container it goes. Now, this is a hard part to smear it out because it's actually getting more solid by the second. Just do your best to get it to the edges. So shiny, and so glossy that I'm just trying to get it to the edges there. But it's already becoming quite kind of self-holding. There you go, that's not too bad. And it will spread when it gets in the oven. Okay, so that is the brownie batter ready to go. And um, it's not gonna rise a heck of a lot because it's only half the dry ingredients with self-raising flour, and you could swap that for plain flour if you want. The trick of it is, okay, and this, I've done this wrong a few times, um, and I hope to do it right today, um, but the trick of it is actually to pull it out before it looks cooked. So you don't actually want this to cook like a cake or it will be dry. You actually wanna bring it out while it's still got that wibble wobble feeling. Um, and the sides will just have a few cracks, but the middle will be quite uncooked. So I'm thinking it's gonna be about 20 minutes, but I'll check with you then. It's different every time, so it's best that you get an idea of how you'd like it to um, be, and I'll show you at that point as well. So in the oven it goes. Ah, oh, someone's gotta do it. Kids are at school. Sorry, kids. Mine. So while that's in the oven, I like to get my ganache made because ganache takes a little while to um, become the right pouring consistency. And this is how I make ganache. Now, the quantities don't matter, so don't get too caught up, but approximately one cup of dark chocolate. The ones that come in the childproof packet. This is the good thing about dark chocolate ganache, it's so easy. All you need is the amount of chocolate that you're gonna get. It should be, could be half a cup, it could be two cups, doesn't matter the amount. And you pour over to fill in the container. Just enough cream to come up the sides. There we go. Now I can't tell you exactly how many millimeters are. All I can tell you is it's topped up to the top of the chocolate there. So it's actually, the chocolate is now in a bowl of cream. Okay, so there's no actual measurement. This is gonna go in the microwave for, I know it's gonna take at least one minute, um, and then I'll check it after that, just on high. So that's had one minute in the microwave. I can feel that the cream is quite hot, and you can see a bit of steam coming out. So what I like to do with the metal spoon, you don't want a wooden spoon here because there could be water on it, and water seizes chocolate. So I'm just gonna stir this together, super quick, like one minute in the microwave. Two ingredients, dark chocolate ganache, there you go. So easy. Now there's a point at which you know it's worked. And you stir and you stir, and it's lumpy, and the cream isn't mixed in yet. And then all of a sudden it becomes one entity, and there's one big, thick, shining gloss of delicious liquid chocolate. And it's still not there yet, it's nearly there. It's starting to become glossy and shiny. And we are just about, ooh, we're so close. There we go. Look at that. So at the moment, if I poured that on any cake, it would be still too warm. So that's why I've made it now while the brownie is in the oven. Now that can be used for so many things. Cake decorating. Oh, 
on your pancakes as an ice cream sauce. There we go, not a lump. Dark chocolate's so easy to work with. It does work with milk chocolate. It does work with white chocolate, but less cream and also um, less heat. So start at 40 seconds and then make sure you actually give it a good stir because you don't want those little white unmelted bits of white chocolate. So then you go up in 10 second increments. White chocolate's a lot more tricky to work with when you're heating it than dark chocolate and milk chocolate. But just keep it at a lower temperature and less cream because there's quite a lot of dairy already. Technically white chocolate's not, it hasn't got chocolate in it. So, but there you go. That's dark chocolate ganache. Look at that. One minute, one minute in the microwave. Okay, here we go guys. This is the brownie just out of the oven. And this is how I know that it's done is we've got these cracked edges here, but when I touch it in the middle, it's still quite gooey. Now it's puffed up at the moment still because it's just out of the oven, but when it cools, it will have sunk a bit and that's how you know it's gonna be dense, fudgy and delicious. Um, so there you have it, there's the dark chocolate brownie done. Then it's gonna cool and we're gonna put that ganache on top and we're gonna drizzle it in salted caramel sauce. So stick around for that bit. Well, the moment I've been waiting for, the house has smelled amazing and just when you need chocolate hit this is the brownie for you it is just about cool good thing about this tray is that it's got a liner and it's dense and it's fudgy and you can see it's flopped down a little bit which is perfect for holding the um, ganache and now let's see if it's movable off here or not. No, I'm just going to leave it on there. How I used to serve it. So in here, this ganache is cooled now, so it's thick and glossy and perfect for spreading. So I'm going to pour it on. Are you ready? to do which is also tempting is just to take it just a little just coax it a little bit over the edge there so it kind of just heading over okay and then to finish with just doing that kind of thing doesn't really matter it's not gonna last long to and then I've got some salted caramel sauce now. I've got a tutorial on this, um, so I'll put a that on another time or check out my YouTube channel. There we go. Crossways. And then Now I haven't made this in six months, but my muscles have a memory of how to make this because I have made literally hundreds of this one. So there you have it, dark chocolate salted caramel brownie. Now, just to complete the absolute gorgeousness, I'm going to cut it for you. It's just too pretty to cut. But I wanna show you what it looks like inside. And that's the texture you're looking for. Just slightly undercooked and as that cools again, it's going to be dense and fudgy. Now that easily will last four days, five days and still be absolutely stunningly delicious. Um, however, I just know it's lucky to be 
it's probably going to last like two days in our house. Um, but that's why you make it and it's one of those treats. It's nothing from the garden in here but however, <laughs> chocolate is, you know, from a plant and so therefore, I hope you like this salad. <laughs> Enjoy.